Okay, so part two, we're going to dive into some breathing and bringing awareness to this yes. pelvis floor. Yes. So, like I said, what I'm going to have you do is lie on your side. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you're going to get nice and comfortable. So, what I'm going to have you do is find your sit bone. Yes, yes. So, we're going to find the sit bone and we're going to just go towards the anal opening, but don't be on the anal. Okay, so a good way to test if you're in the right spot is to give yourself a cough, and you should feel movement on the fingers. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So we are going to talk about different types of breathing. So for just quiet breathing, what should be happening is every time you inhale, the pelvic floor should extend down into your fingers. So you should feel more pressure on your fingers when you inhale, and you should quietly come back up off your fingers when you exhale. Do you feel that? Yeah, I am. Perfect. Wonderful. So that's just regular how we should be breathing everyday life. Now, if we're looking to lengthen the pelvic floor, say your pelvic floor is too tight and you want to get some more range of motion in there, you're going to really emphasize that inhale and think like you're trying to inflate a balloon. When a balloon is inflated, the sides go out and the bottom expands downward and out. So think of your rib cage, your back, your belly as the size of that balloon and then the pelvic floor at the bottom of that balloon. So really inflate that balloon really, really big, nice big inhale. And then on the exhale, you just passively let that air out. What should happen with a passive exhale is that you should have new length in the pelvic floor. So you might not come all the way back up to that original resting position because that resting position was too tight. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. Do we yeah. feel that there? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So this would be a breathing technique I would have you do in combination with stretches to help again gain some new length and range of motion in the pelvic floor. So now we're going to talk about avoiding breath. So this is what you're going to do when you're having a hard time avoiding the balance of the bladder. Obviously, you're going to want to have more intention on one sphincter over the other one, uh, depending on what you're trying to achieve. But the breathing technique is the same. Mm -hmm. So same really big inhale, that nice inflating the balloon inhale. Then on the exhale, you're going to just try and stay long. So we're not passively just letting the pelvic floor come back up. We're trying to stay long. If we're trying to do number one, we try to keep the urethral opening open. If we're doing number two, same thing for the um, ankle. Do we feel that there? Yeah. Perfect. Very good. Okay, this is also a very um, generalized version of how I teach pushing because pushing is the same idea. You want to inhale and really expand and exhale and stay long. We just play a little bit more with the glottis to, um, to increase pressure without having too much pressure on the pelvic floor and make sure that the pelvic floor really moves down. Yes, and we also focus on the vaginal opening because that's what the baby's coming out. So yeah, as in pushing out a baby. Yes, as in pushing out a baby. Yes, exactly. Okay, very last one. We are going to do pelvic floor activation. So I say it again: we hate kegels in real life. We don't do those just for training, but to learn how to activate the pelvic floor and use it while you're doing other muscles, sometimes you have to kind of train that breath. Mm -hmm. Control. So we do our nice big inhale, same really big inhale, that inhale never changes. Then on the exhale, we want to lift off the fingers. So you should feel like you really pushed into the fingers and then you'll lift off with a little bit more force. Abdominal muscles should be slightly engaged as well because you're bringing that air out of the belly with a little bit more um, force. And you should feel like you're closing and lifting in the pelvic. Uh, Perfect. And yeah. you can relax it. So that's how you breathe when you're doing your strength training, really when you're exercising in general, because the pelvic floor should be moving up and down as you work out. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay, so that is how you breathe and bring awareness to the pelvic floor. If you are a tactile learner, you can do what Dr. Sanabay was doing, find that sit bone, come in just a little bit and feel the movement on the fingers. And if you are a visual learner, you can always take a mirror. I like to use mechanics mirrors, which you can just hold it down and see either your perineum 
or even you can sometimes see the um, tissue right next to uh, the sit bone move up and down as well. If you mm -hmm. have good range of motion, you can okay. see it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're fine. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Am I? No. Okay, great. How do we feel about that one? Okay? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. So the last one is going to be. So now we're resuming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, is this the same video? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. So then we're going to add in um, something that is called a toe bone release, and we do it with a cat cow. Okay. So we're going to go on our hands and knees, and we're going to use our pelvic floor lengthening breath. Now, before we go into any of that, on the hands and knees, first of all, really good. That was good. Good. Push down a little bit. Okay, <laughs> so we're going to keep. Please don't do this. I hate that. It's my bad thing. So when you breathe in, I want you to see your belly actually let go without your spine moving. So we're not going to go into that cat cat just yet. We're just going to do some breathing in the quadruped so that we can see how the belly is supposed to move with the pelvic floor. So inhale, nice, really big belly. Exhale, everything comes back up nice and quietly. Inhale, really big belly. Everything expands. You can't see it because I got a shirt on. But yeah, so it's too there. There we go. There, whoop, there we go. Okay, so nice big inhale. Exhale. Good. Inhale again. Belly should just be dropping. Good. And now exhale. Okay, great. Okay, so now we're gonna add in what I like to call cow neutral. So we're not yet at the cat. So in the cow, when you inhale, you're actually going to Arch the back and think about making your tailbone extend out behind you. Yep, and then exhale, come back to neutral. Yes, so keep going. Nice big inhale. Exhale, come back to neutral. So this is where we're going to introduce that pelvic floor lengthening breath. Remember, we go really, really big on that inhale. Really arch the back, open up the tailbone. Exhale, just come back to neutral because we're trying to get new length. If we're going for a full range of motion, we'll go into the full cat cow. So we'll do nice, big cow. On the exhale, we'll go into cat, we'll go into flexion, but just be careful not to squeeze the pelvic floor because we're looking to just mobilize. So whatever the pelvic floor does naturally, let it do it, but don't aim to contract on that exhale. Really focus more so on the inhale, because like we said before, a lot of us are just really tight. If we want a little bit more opening of the pelvic floor, we can internally rotate the hips. So spread the knee, yep, 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 exactly, exactly. So knees in, toes out. That's gonna separate the sit bones and the shield to velocities and give you more space, and you'll feel more opening in the body you even sink into the hips a little bit more to help you can stretch. you can yeah. yes yes so sometimes you do need a low back release so coming back a little bit can help give your back the release that it needs so that the pelvis can extend even more when you go into the cow yeah i've never paid attention to like as you round also thinking about not flexing the pelvic floor uh-huh you just let me get some movement. Yes. And then one more thing, a pro tip, is when you're breathing, you want to keep a relaxed jaw. If you are tightening your jaw, really pursing your lips super tight, you could be generating more attention in your pelvic floor. We don't want that. No. So we want to have a nice central face, breathe in really deeply through the nose, out of the mouth. What, is, what should they be paying attention to with the tongue as well? I like the tongue to be at the roof of the mouth if they can't relax their jaw. Does okay. that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like if you're like just not able to do it, if you just, it'll make your jaw kind of chill. If not, then have a neutral tongue. Okay. But I like the roof of the mouth if you're having a hard time releasing. I mean, one thing I've heard is just swallow and then wherever your tongue rests after you swallow. That's your resting position. That's the resting position of yeah. the tongue. So that's yeah. a good tip just mm -hmm. to bring awareness to there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Very good. And honestly, that's like a great foundation. To so how long? Like if somebody's going to practice these, I don't know, 
said three times a week, like a minute at a time. So a minute kind of each mm-hmm. sideline, mm-hmm. those three different breaths we talked about. Mm-hmm. Not, they're not different, but just three different awarenesses to bring to exactly. the breath. Exactly. And then the uh, and then a minute when the cat cows. Yeah. I would say a minute just quiet breathing, a minute cow and neutral, a minute cat cow. Okay. Yeah. So about six minutes. Yeah. Five to six minutes. Yeah. And that's if you're starting from nothing. If you already have an awareness, you can do half the time. And yeah. It'll be great. Mm-hmm. That's be even if yeah. It's a good way to <laughs> yeah, just, still do it. <laughs> no, but just practicing the breathing and just slowing down like that, it will just relax your whole system and it does. It's good for you. It so. does. It does. There's <laughs> a good benefit to doing these. It is. It is. It does. When you breathe like that, it does activate your parasympathetic nervous system. Yeah. So you do feel a lot more relaxed. Um, I will say, when it comes to like learning how to contract the pelvic floor, when you do that, don't squeeze it for dear life because you're not trying to build strength in this way. You're trying to learn how to coordinate your breath with the pelvic floor. So I would say like twenty five percent of your max is like more than enough. More than enough. I'd say ten would be ideal, but just yeah. learn to find it so that when you're doing things like bridges and squats and things like that, and you need more of that um, that oomph, that force, you know how to grab it because you have the mechanics. Yeah, and I think you already mentioned it but too. Is like the diaphragm muscle sitting here. And let's imagine this is the pelvic floor is the diaphragm descends to let us inhale, pelvic floor is going to move with it, so they just kind of dance together. They dance Ideally. together. Yes, <laughs> yes. And a lot of times, we have to go back and retrain breathing because that system is off. Wow. People are going like this, and oh that's God. not great for yeah. all your organs in there and your functionality. So Organs and also your spine. Your spine. You're, going to get, you're going to injure your back a lot easier. Yes. Because it's just unstable. Yes, I can't tell you how many times I've had lifters that would have back injuries because they're breathing all crazy, doing their deadlifts and things and their squats, and I have to train them out of that. Like, no, that's actually not good for stabilizing. So, how about like if somebody's doing a heavy lift, uh, be it a deadlift, whatever, um, should they be exhaling, holding the breath? I'm not a fan of holding breath. Okay. I, I'm not a power lifter, so sorry to all the power lifting <laughs> coaches, but just as a PT, I'm not, I'm not a fan of holding breath. How I teach people if they're going to do a deadlift is they inhale as they go down. I tell them to think about what their glutes are doing. So your glutes actually relax under a load. It's, it's eccentric loading yes. when you go down. They're getting longer. They're getting longer, but they're still having to work. Your pelvic floor should be doing the exact same thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you inhale and think of a trampoline. When you go down on a trampoline, it's holding you with stretching. Yeah. So that's what the pelvic floor is doing as you go down. And then when you go to pick it up and you do that concentric contraction in the glutes, that's when you exhale, pull belly in, pull pelvic floor up. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, for those of you who lift or you're just lifting whatever, Mm -hmm. you probably have to cut back on the weights to bring awareness to it, but... Yes, and move slower. Yeah, honestly, move move way slower because one, it's gonna make you stronger, and two, um, you have less chance for injury. If if you know how to eccentrically load your pelvic floor, you're gonna be a powerhouse. Because then, when it's time to actually engage, you're gonna have so much more to pull from. You'll generate a more forceful contraction. Yeah, and it'll be easier for you to pick that weight up and have the stability in your back and not injure it. Yes. Yeah, because you can't, if the muscle's already like that, you can't tighten it. You more. can't do anything. It has to be open. Exactly, exactly. And that's why we like deadlifts per se, because you're literally going like super, super, super in your stretch, and then you use all that that you built up to contract and be able to lift it up. Okay. Lots thank of tips you. here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, thank you for uh, coming on. Thank and you for having me. Yeah. So, yeah, explore the breathing. Uh, mm-hmm. It's great stuff. Thank you. And we'll put uh, Dr. Curl's info in the description for the video as well. And you can find her. But it's pretty, your website's pretty straightforward. Dr. Curl's for the girls. <laughs> yes, you'll find my phone number. You can email me. You see, but all the things that I offer are on my website. Um, I'm coming back to Instagram soon. 
Okay. I'm not, I'm not there to go a lot of time on, but you can, find, <laughs> you can find me on my website. I'm available by email and phone. So. Awesome. Yes. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye.